Have you ever felt like the game is running in slow motion the time you had to make an important decision? Well, this is the feeling a player usually experiences in cases of high pressure where split-second decision-making is required. That slow-mo effect can be reproduced and trained, and that is exactly what we're going to discuss in today's video. So make sure you stick until the end to get all the important nuggets of information. Let's kick this video off by defining the term reactionary ability, otherwise known as your reflexes. Your reactionary ability basically is a skill that combines the cognitive and physical ability of a player. More specifically, it is a footballer's ability to react to a certain external or internal cue or stimulus and perform an action at a certain speed that is appropriate to the play. To make this more clear for you, imagine the ball is traveling to your feet and while it approaches you, an opponent is closing in to press you. How you act in response to that stimulus is your reactionary ability. Generally, there are two types of reactions in football, simple and complex reactions. Simple reactions are those that involve a stimulus and a simple predetermined action, whereas complex ones are usually more sophisticated and centered around problem solving. They utilize more cognitive stimuli and require a wide range of skills such as your technical ability, your tactical intelligence, your physical conditioning, and the list goes on. But why do you need to know all of that stuff and improve your reactions, you might ask? Well, the reasoning behind that is simple. Football has changed, the speed of play has changed, everything is getting faster and faster. But I am not talking about the kind of speed you're thinking. The cognitive demands of the modern game are getting higher and higher. In my point of view, if you cannot keep up with the speed of play of your teammates, you will most probably fail in this game. Every centimeter, millisecond and step counts. One step late and you've lost the battle. One millisecond late and you've lost the chance to score the game-winning goal. This is modern football. Those marginal wins are what you should be after. Of course, I am not saying that your reactionary ability is the end-all be-all answer to performance, but it definitely is a really important part of the speed of play equation that is present in each action and decision you take. What this essentially means is that your speed of play is dependent on your decision-making ability, or more specifically, on the perception-action coupling principle. And as you understand, this principle is heavily relying on your cognitive ability. That's why we have to look at it holistically and understand that cognition without action is nothing. Now, according to Vladimir Zatsyarsky, there are five phases during the reactionary process. Phase number one consists of the appearance of a stimulus or cue to the sensory organs. Then, the central nervous system gets stimulated. As a result, a stimulus gets created which is then sent to your brain through your nervous system to create a command. This command is then sent to the appropriate muscles through the CNS. The muscles are finally stimulated by the command and movement is produced. In other, more simple terms, this process can be broken down into three actual phases. The perception phase, the processing phase, and the action phase. All of these processes happen within split seconds during sports, so if you ultimately want to improve those aspects of your game, all you gotta do is challenge those phases at a fast pace. Let me be more specific though. There are two different styles of reactionary training, simple and complex reactionary drills. Simple reactions are the ones that involve specific movements in reaction to a specific cue or stimulus that is predetermined and known to the player. This type of training is usually a way to progress simple technical drills and make them a bit more demanding by adding a game-specific stimulus. On the other hand, we have complex reactions whose core characteristic is decision-making, aka problem-solving. The player basically reacts to different cues or stimuli and finally produces the appropriate movement in reaction to that specific stimulus. The environment of these drills is usually not controlled, chaotic, and the variety of possible decisions is broad. This form of reactionary training is really close to the skill you will actually need in-game problem solving. Now let's talk about the tools and exercises you can use to improve this part of your game. First of all, cognitive training is based on stimulating the primary sensory organs of your body, your eyes and ears. As a result, we already have two simple reactionary training types, visual and auditory training. Both your eyes and ears play a crucial part in the problem solving process as both of these systems are delivering information to your brain. Without that information, your brain won't be able to produce appropriate actions. There are various ways you can start implementing visual as well as acoustic cues and stimuli to your training. For example, you can use visual stimuli like pointing directions with your arms, colored items such as cones, arrows showing a specific direction, numbers, or even a ball. Virtual reality and other tech companies and apps are also joining the party and I'm so excited to see how this field is going to evolve in the future. You might as well include verbal cues to further increase the cognitive demands of a drill and make it a bit more realistic. 
This includes verbal cues like directions, colors, numbers, game realistic phrases such as man on, acoustic signals like claps or whistle blows and the list goes on. All of those visual and verbal cues we mentioned can be used to create simple reactionary drills. However, you shall also consider other forms of training that consist of complex reactions. Complex reactionary drills are the ones where the player's problem solving ability is constantly being challenged. No matter the level or the age of the individual player, complex reactionary ability should be part of training, primarily in a team setup. These drills can be deemed as effective ones not only for reactionary training but for performance and development overall as they seem to allow freedom and instill responsibility within the player. These drills aren't only limited to a combination of visual and verbal stimuli but can also include the pressure of time, space and opponents. Complex reactionary drills include exercises such as position specific drills based on problem solving, roundouts, small sided games, possession games, games with overloads and limitations of any sort like touch or space limitations that will force you to perceive, process and act faster, as well as simple yet effective two sided games. As you realize, complex drills are as game specific as they can get. There is literally no better way to improve your reactions in football than to actually react to game specific cues and stimuli in a game setup. That is the reason why coaches, even elite level ones, use drills such as the ones mentioned here. But please, do not get trapped into thinking that this is the only way to improve your cognitive skills. As we mentioned, you need to include variety in your training and diversify your approach. Let me be more specific though and offer you a realistic and progressive plan. The first thing I would like to address is that you simply need to build the fundamentals first as early in your career as possible. There is really no point in investing all of your training hours into cognitive training if you're lacking basic elements of the game. Once you build the foundation, you can then start to progressively use cognitive training to further increase the demands of your drills and sessions. Start off by adding simple reactions here and there and progressively build your way up the more solid your base of skills becomes. But be careful and don't fall into the sport specificity trap. Not every drill you do must consist of a cognitive stimulus. Now the style and dosing of those exercises is completely up to you, your coach and your development stage. In fact, if I were to structure a technical training session with a group of players, I would probably start off with plain and repetitive technical work. I would then progress those technical training drills by adding some cognitive components to the exercises and probably finish off with some game specific drills such as small sided games or position specific drills with added visual or verbal stimuli to challenge their problem solving skills they need in their position. Having said that, this is just a super general approach and context would, be, would obviously play a huge role. Those 8 tips that you're seeing on screen right now can give you a rough idea of how you can add and progress cognitive training in your development process. All in all though, balancing the different training stressors based on your individual level as well as your strengths and weaknesses is what can really make the difference in your speed of play. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to also watch this one next to fully understand what it takes to improve your speed of play.